Here I have a short video uh, on this old 386 uh, computer I've restored and fixed. Um, this was a project that took weeks. I had to completely clean it. I had to glue the plastic case back together. That was so brittle that it broke. Uh, I had to replace the power supply fan. I had to uh, mess around with drivers, with getting everything to work. I had to reinstall Windows several times because I broke it with the wrong drivers. Uh, it's been a mess. Uh, I've spent weeks on this project. One of the things that took the longest out of everything had to do with the turbo button. So I'll try to explain it really, really briefly. The problems I had, uh, my misunderstanding and how the button worked, and how I fixed this. Uh, so the problem is when I repaired this computer, I took off the front panel to glue it. Uh, so I had to disconnect all these headers. Uh, I did take a picture of how they went, but I was dumb, so the picture was unclear, so it was useless to me. Uh, and that mistake cost me a lot of time. And even if I did get the wiring right at once, I would have still run into the problem that I didn't actually understand how, yeah, what was going on. Uh, let me try to explain it. So, um, basically, if I turn on the computer, it should be running at 40 megahertz by default, unless you enable the turbo mode, then it should go to 50 megahertz. And when I start it up, sorry for the focus, if I start it up, it should report the 40 megahertz the processor runs at on by default. Um, that's because the button isn't pressed. And you can see the turbo LED is not actually illuminating. So far, so good. Now, um, when I do enable the turbo button, how do I see if it actually runs in turbo mode? Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, so when I reset it, right now I expect it to say 50 megahertz. But it doesn't. If I reset it again, And I mess with the button, maybe by holding it. Reset again. Oh, by the way, one thing. If you know why uh, the TVGA uh, GPU BIOS is sometimes in color and sometimes in monochrome, I'd like to hear. Because that's something else I can't get figured out. Um... Okay, it's not doing it right now, but it used to actually display 50 megahertz sometimes. Maybe I can get that result back by swapping the cable. This also uh, applies to all DOS applications, so sometimes it's just in monochrome and I cannot get any colors. That's annoying. I don't know why it does this. I'll probably have to test with another monitor at some point. Alright, th there you go. You can see it's now running at 50 megahertz according to the startup screen. Um, so when I was messing around with this computer, the frequency disappeared sometime and I couldn't get it back at all. So I had no idea what it was running at. Uh, before I got that figured out, I went to, uh, through uh, testing out every single free CPU information or motherboard information or system information tool I could find, and none of them worked. None of them could report the turbo frequency. Most of them didn't show the speed at all, and they just said it was a 386 processor. Uh, so the problem I've been having is... Uh, let me, so now the turbo is on. Let me reset it again. And it's probably going to say 40 megahertz again. So it's unreliable. And I didn't understand. I was messing with the switch, messing with the connector. So let me explain uh, what the problem is. And let me show you how I found out. So basically, the biggest mistake. Uh, let me try to focus. You can see the turbo LED header has two pins. 
And this can only go one way. If you connect it the wrong way, the LED will never light up. That's how LEDs work. That's how diodes work. They only go one way. And then here we have the turbo switch. And you expect this to go on the three pins because it's a three, three pin header. What I thought is that you had one high, one low, and one ground pin. That would make sense. But for some stupid reason, uh, what you need to do with this motherboard, if you wire it up like this or this, I don't really, really remember, but one of these ways, and then just to use all the three pins, um, it would work, but the turbo button would be inversed. That's not what you want. You want it to run in turbo mode when you press the button, and you want it to stop when it's unpressed. Another problem it's having, which I will not demonstrate right now, is that the LED was always uh, on, slightly, unless you put it in turbo mode, then it would bur um, go brighter. The problem is that if you hold the button halfway, it would go off. It, it sounded unreliable, I thought the button itself was broken. So obviously I used a jumper to test it out, and, and, and I did get the same unreliable results with the boot screen. So that's uh, why I got to think that the turbo was something you had to enable or disable at boot up and it would only last until a reset and that you had to turn on and off or off and on uh, when you wanted to change the state of the turbo. It's really complicated, I didn't understand how this stupid button was making me not understand this computer. Um, it's horrible, I never worked with these kinds of computers before because these machines are older than I am. But um, when I finally did figure it out, how it works, that you had to only use two pins. Uh, that's when I learned uh, that after I already gave, it up, gave up, that's when I learned that the information is incorrect. It doesn't actually show the right frequency. The, the, the message on boot up is totally useless. Let me show you how I figured out. A, how the turbo is supposed to work, and B, that it actually does work. So now it's booting up, I have the turbo unpressed, so it shouldn't turbo right now. So it's 40 megahertz, that's fine. Nothing wrong here. Okay, high mem is working again too. So what I did was I uh, finally got everything working. So I copied some old games onto the hard drive for testing purposes. I wanted to see which ones run, which ones don't, and if the audio is working in DOS and things like that. So um, the first game I tried um, was the blockout game. And when you open menu, that's uh, an exe file, it asks me which uh, computer of which display which uh, I'm using. Um, this is an illegal game apparently because it's cracked, I didn't know this. These all come from old floppies that weren't even mine. So uh, what I discovered was when I press C for EGA graphics. And now I press the... Okay, well, I, I cannot show this off. It shows the menu and then it disappears, because I'm probably running the wrong file, but this is how I found out. So let me press the turbo. And now unpress it. As you can see, the speed changes. This is the key. This is how I found out. The turbo does work, and it does actually work at runtime. It has nothing to do with the state when you turn on the computer. Simple as this. Now when I did eventually wire up the switch like this with the empty pin in the middle, the LED started working too. Uh, it's really dim, so because I'm using a flash right now, you cannot see it, but uh, it goes from off to on now instead of brighter and less bright. 
It is pretty dim compared to before, but it does actually indicate that it's running or not. So one last thing. Let me disable the turbo functionality. I have a program installed called NSSY. Uh, I. This is one of the uh, free system information tools I could find on the internet that runs on DOS. Okay, that's just working again. Maybe it was because I started in monochrome uh, last time. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, invalidate. No, it's not. Okay, right here. This is always 40 megahertz, no matter what. That was the first time I got caught off guard by a program that actually does show the speed. However, this does have a benchmark tool. And when I run the CPU benchmark, you can see it's now okay. So when I enable the turbo button, oh, it is enabled. When I disable the turbo button, you can see it completely drops down. It even performs slower than a 286 processor. This explains why installing Microsoft Office took three hours, probably. And when I turn the turbo back on, it immediately jumps up here. So this is real time. This is it. This is everything I had to know. This is what completely made me waste two days of my life. But now I know how it works. So I'm very happy. That's all you need to know. I don't know why it's wired up like this and I couldn't find the motherboard online or the pinout or more information. I looked everywhere. So I gave up, but then unexpectedly because of a stupid game that's probably not even working right on this computer because it's probably made for an even older PC, uh, I found out. Thanks so much for watching.